Some people have been wounded by the people they so much trust. Some people have been wounded in one way or the other. Some people now cannot forgive themselves because of the kind of wound somebody has caused them. This kingdom of God we are talking about. If you come to preach the gospel, hey, Jesus is coming back again. No, Jesus is good though. And there is no evidential proof that Jesus is good and Jesus is coming back again. Many will not believe. That's why Jesus says some will not believe unless they see. If the man that was with Jesus, Thomas, cannot still believe when Jesus resurrected and they saw his face, saw everything that Jesus is Lord. If he can still doubt and say until I put my hand where they, 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 they nail him before I can believe. How much more people of nowadays? So what you see happening today, the, 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 the kingdom of darkness enriching themselves, bringing hardship on people, causing all of those things, is because they are equipping their kingdom. And why they are equipping their kingdom is to have money. Money is power. If you don't have money, <laughs> my dear, <laughs> it might look somehow, <laughs> it might look what? It might look some, ah, you don't have money, how will you have this kind of speaker? How will you have this kind of equipment? If you don't have money, how will you be able to power this place and put on this light? To run the things, you know how much this very service we are doing now, the, 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 to, to fuel the, 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 the list are there, do you know amount? By the time the service is over, do you know how much thousand that is born? If you give offering, all of you give offering, will it amount to even 2% of the money of the fueling? Eh? So some people will say, ah, uh, 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 the, the, the children of God are not made to, to have money. Children of God need to be wealthy because the silver and gold and diamond, they belong to God. It depends on what you are going to do with the money that God is going to give you. The wealth, the riches God is going to give to you, it depends on what you are going to do with it. Some people will get it only to use it and oppress the poor. Some will have it only to use it against the kingdom of God. Some will have it only for them to deviate from faith. There are people that can be in the house of God. They are ushers, they are choirs, they are singers. And then God all of a sudden lifts them up. The moment they get money, they turn their back on God. I've also seen it before in the house of God. A young man that will be coming to sing and sing and sing. And after God has blessed him, even from the church, we no longer see him again because he believes he has gotten money. So these are the things God is looking out for. If God blesses you, what are you going to do with that thing that God is going to bless you with? So God is looking for those that will judiciously manage the kingdom wealth that he's going to deposit in their hand. Or God is going to bless you and make you wealthy. Then you now discover, oh, I don't need to come to church on time. A man was praying to God and saying, oh God, bless me, bless me. And one of the day, the Spirit of God came down and the prophecy came upon him that he's going to receive the promotion from now to three months. And the man thought it was a joke. And the place he was working was working with a police force in the Department of Finance. And all of a sudden, within a space of some weeks, God gave him a promotion. He was promoted to be among the top people paying salary to people in police. The very first week he entered that office, money was stolen there. And the money that was stolen, he now turned to something they would now to query him or they fire him or he should provide the money. And the case was on. They said, okay, by, the, by Monday we are going to look into this matter. And this man ran to the house of God and said, oh God, remember you are the one that promised me this very promotion. Promotion has come, but money was taken. Look at, look at, I don't know who came and took the money. And God said, I want to use that money to give you all the fullness of the blessing that you need in that office. And God said, the person that took the money is so 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 person like this, like that, like that. This is the person. Do you know somebody like this called so 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 so? He said yes. And God said, this person that is like this called so 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 is the one that took the money. And that money has not been taken far away. But I'm going to do something. And she will confess. And when she confessed and the money brought back, you will now get 
the next level that will make you to be the overall in that office. And the God make it happen and this man was highly blessed and that secret opened and the person that took that money was discovered and caught and they brought the money back and the man was promoted. Within a period of one month, he bought a car. He was doing very well, bought land there, started building. Before you know it, you know what happened? This man will return and drive into the church in the evening when people are doing Bible study. He will just come and say, hey, my wife, my daughter, oh yeah, all of you, enter moto, enter moto, enter moto. We will pack them and go home. Ah. And then the man of God confronted him and said, man, my son, why are you behaving like this? He said, eh, when I return home, I'll be honing nobody to open the gate for me. Hallelujah. Nobody to do what? To open gate for him because he is now a car owner. This story I'm telling you is a true life story of what happened in my very eyes, not a dream. Do you know that as God blessed the young man, okay, that one was overlooked and the man now bring money, supported and the church did their inauguration there. After inauguration and everything, he was the one that sponsored everything, supported because he had the money, was, you know, doing very well. And after the inauguration, the person that came and inaugurated and ordained them, the man went and met him and said, ah, what does it take to even become a reverend, to even become ordained minister? And the man said, ah, what does it take? <laughs> if, you, if you want me, I can just come and uh, organize it. He said, don't worry, I have a plan. And this man went as far as buying the land, put his own church, start his own ministry, call the man of God to come and ordain him. Do you know today, that man is a story. You also need to be careful when God is blessing you because there are people that when God blesses them, they puff up. The problem with the kingdom wealth is that kingdom wealth is not a wealth to puff up. Kingdom wealth is not a wealth for you to oppress others. Kingdom wealth is not a wealth for you to be the enemy of God or enemy of the house of God. But if you can humble yourself and you tap into the kingdom wealth and use it for the work of the kingdom, then your reward will be great in heaven. You will now be among those people that like Abraham that has his own bosom that people are coming to stay because you will become a shelter to thousands of people. You will be a blessing to the house of God. When they say the church needs it, you are the first person to bring the support. When they say for evangelism, you are the one to even ask, what did the church need? You are the one to support the gospel and make sure that the kingdom of God and the word of God is preached all over the place. Because Jesus became poor for you and I to be rich, to be wealthy, to succeed, to prosper, and to also use what is given to us to propagate the gospel. Because it is by prosperity that the gospel will spread abroad. If we want to open a branch in America, it is the prosperity that God has given to us here, or you that you used to support the work of God, or you are ready to pump into the work of God, that will open the branch. I was ministering to somebody and I told the person, I said, the kind of heart you have, the kind of person I see you to be in the spirit, God said to me that he's going to entrust in your hand the kingdom wealth. Not the type of man that was the first person I financially prophesied to here that became very wealthy and very rich. A man that was owing 800,000. As he was owing this money, somebody now directed him, oh, that's your wife church. Follow your wife to church. And the wife said, okay, but come to our church. He came here the first day he came. I prophesied to him and I told him about financial open door that is coming. There's a business coming from UK that will make him to hit 300 million at a go. Instant. This man doubted it because he never believed. What brought him here was just the, 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 the debt he was owing that resulted to police case. But when he came, God passed through me and told him about financial breakthrough that is coming through a business from UK. The prophecy went as far as describing how the business will be everything that will happen in the business. 
what I'm telling you is not a dream. It's something that happened physically here. And when God finally blessed that man, do you know the man didn't even pay tight? The man didn't even bring, uh, let's say, okay, 10,000 or 50,000 church to take. No. That would have been the first time that this church would have had his first breakthrough. What did the man do? Uh, man of God, let us uh, seal this place. Call the carpenter, let them make a ceiling. Let them come, put ceiling. I call carpenter, carpenter, put the ceiling. After putting the ceiling, I said, uh, sir, they are asking for some money so that I can continue. Uh, I'm coming, I'm going to Kotonu, I'm going to Sokoto, I'm in Abuja. I will be coming by flight. I am going tomorrow morning, afternoon, night, till today. I have to pay that very ceiling by myself. Kingdom wealth is not the one that when God gives it to you, you become a terror against your fellow human being. The Bible says, he that he bet wealth will he bid for those that will have mercy on the poor. When God bless you, put yourself in the position of another person that has not eaten. There are people that has not eaten, but you have eaten four square meals. And some people have enough food in their house and they are throwing it away, while other people have not even eaten one square meal. What will make you and what will prepare you and what will make your heart to be available for the kingdom world? Is God going to put the resources in your hand for you to destroy other believers? Amen. I said amen. So the price Jesus paid about our poverty is for us to be wealthy and to do the work of God with the resources he's putting in our hand. I pray that you will be among those good-hearted people that God will put their resources in your hand in the name of Jesus. I say in the name of Jesus. May you be among the people God will commit the kingdom world to build the kingdom of God for God in Jesus' mighty name. Another thing, number two, is that he paid the price for our wounds to be healed. Jesus paid the price for our wounds to be healed. Some people have been wounded by their loved ones. Some people have been wounded by the people they so much trust. Some people have been wounded in one way or the other. Some people now cannot forgive themselves because of the kind of wound somebody has caused them. Some has even been wounded through the word that another person went and spoke against them. When you are busy gossiping a man that has done you nothing, when you are busy biting the hand that fed you, you are wounding that person. When you go out there, oh, do you know that that person yeah, is a money ritual? Do you know that that person is this? Do you know that that person is that? Do you know you are wounding the person? But one happiness and joy that we have is that Jesus has paid for that wound. And so therefore, let your wound be healed. I'm not hearing your amen there. I said, let your wound be healed in the mighty... Thank you.